A few days ago, Mother promised that if Julian made be on his English, she would let us go riding. Well, I was so happy that I promised to spend my last dollar on it. You see, it costs 50 cents a, an hour a person. Yesterday, Mother began to be afraid that I would hurt myself if I went riding. At last, she said that I might as well die on a horse as any other way. I quite agreed with her, so she went to the phone to call Mr. Tally, the riding stable man. She called the number, and Central answered and said that Mr. Tally had had his phone disconnected. Mother then said that that meant that I shouldn't go riding. She thought even if God didn't talk right out to a person, he had certain incidents to come up by which he would show a person what they should do. Well, I still thought she would let me go, and I would stop talking about it, but when we got back in the kitchen and she began stoning plums, she said, Now, I don't mean to be fussing, but just remember Miss Harding. She was a very strong, healthy young woman before that horse threw her. Would you like to be an invalid for the rest of your life? Of course, I'd be perfectly willing to wait on you, and I'd do anything to help you, but if you broke your back, I couldn't fix it, nor you could you, by saying, I'm sorry, or I didn't mean to. Well, today at dinner, I thought I'd better remind her what we were planning to do this afternoon. I said, Mama, what shall we do this afternoon? You'll help me make chow chow, she said decidedly. Well, I began to plead and beg and argue, but all was in vain. I sulked all through dinner, and afterwards, Mother finally got tired of it and said, now, Daddy, you know that I know far more about staying on a horse than Jane does because I was reared in the country. I remember old Blackie used to kick us like he had the regular old D in him. Why, you let Julian and Jane go anywhere themselves and they'll raise Cain. Dare each other till one of them gets hurt. You remember Miss Harding. She said to me one time, I just crave horseback riding. I wonder if she still does since she's had her back broken. And all of that for a little pleasure. Now that last just galled me green. Mother doesn't realize how good I am. She would, though, if she got hold of Martha for about a week. She'd be glad enough to get me back. I hardly ever ask to go anywhere, and I'm not always asking for new and expensive clothes. I don't mean this for bragging, though it may sound like that. All for a little pleasure. All for a little pleasure? Ha! All I get is reading, and though I'll enjoy that forever, I do that all the time. Well, in about my blackest moment, a vibrator which Daddy had ordered to help his knees for making at night, well, we turned that on each other and finally raised my sinking spirits. That thing sends electricity all over you. It's good for headaches, nervousness, rheumatism, indigestion, and soreness in all muscles. It fairly raises the skin and makes you feel shivery all over. That still left me a trifle depressed, so Mother gave me a lump or two of brown sugar. Sure was good to sweeten my disposition. I divided it with Sister, Daddy, and Julian. A Disappointment I wanted to ride on the back of a horse, but this my mother refused to endorse. I pleaded, I begged, and I sulked all day, but mother from her decision would not sway. She gave me some sugar to sweeten my temper, and begged me not in a corner to simper. Now I've been good for ever so long, and still they think I'm, seem to think I'm wrong. I don't beg to go out at night, or buy clothes to make me look a sight. All of the pleasures that I have are books which always act as a healing salve. Mother's given me a garden. It's divided in three parts. One part I've planted vegetables in, carrots, beets, lettuce, and radishes. In the middle division, I'm going to set out La France roses. They are such a pretty shell pink and smell so sweet. My garden is right by the house, so we'll have all the perfume we want. In the third division are all already planted jonquils, narcissus, and a few other bulbs. I'm going to order some more bulbs and have that thickly sodded with bulbs. My garden. I've planted a garden right near the house, and I've planted therein a number of things. In the first little bed, the vegetables grow, beets and lettuce and carrots like strings. In the second little bed, grow roses so pink, and they come from the land called La France. They throw my mind into ecstasies so rare, a panorama of delightful dreams prance. Tulips from the gay land of dykes, and narcissus from another sunny land, mingle with jonquils and hyacinths so sweet, and make my nostrils with pleasure expand. A day. A day can be hateful, a day can be fateful, a day can be frightfully rare. But none have been so hateful, none have been so fateful, as the day I forgot to take care. I burned the beans black, and the switch was not slack, and I wept the most salty of tears. I dropped the clean clothes and ran from my foes before I should realize my fears. I tore my dress, oh what a mess, and hastily sewed it up. This day has been hateful, and this day has been fateful, and all before I sup.